they can be weighted to wherever they're needed most, whether that's as a brigade reserve or itself acting as a spearhead in an attack. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a video from Battle Order. Now, this is all about Ukraine's mechanized infantry. Now, we've seen a lot of Ukraine and their military, uh, a lot of footage out there, but their mechanized infantry is something that we're seeing a lot more of. And I gotta say, it looks pretty freaking mean, pretty effective. So I think understanding the organization, so it looks like it's going from the squad to the brigade level. Understanding the organization kind of allows us to understand why they are being so successful and how they can operate and why they operate in certain ways and also how they can adapt those specific sizes of those units to the the landscape that we're seeing now in this in this war in ukraine so yeah it, it's kind of cool to also compare them to like the u.s military generally speaking they're not really going to be that different now i don't have a mechanized infantry background i do have a light infantry background but again i can kind of appreciate like the organization of why they have certain groups uh, kind of supporting each other and also the breakdown when it comes to like the driver and the, the gunner or the commander. It's just interesting to learn about, especially with all the footage out there with Ukraine's mechanized infantry. So should be good. Battle order does some fantastic stuff. So let's check it out. This is the Ukrainian mechanized infantryman, the muscle of the mechanized troops that engages and destroys the enemy via close combat. The mechanized troops are Ukraine's regular infantry branch, represented on their berets by two crossed wheel lock muskets and a bursting that's, bomb. That's cool. Their tactical arm patch is an olive shield with a blue trident, not to be confused with the similar territorial defense patch, which has battlements. The base. Okay, good to know. Again, we've been seeing a lot of these patches showing up and kind of understanding what they mean allows us to better understand like what that unit might actually be doing there. But yeah, that mechanized troop pin, that's freaking, that's super clean. Six soldier earns a salary of 13,244 hryvnia a month, equivalent to 358 Damn. US dollars as of late 2022. But Okay, so in comparison, a US private, I don't know, probably makes like, 1500 a month uh maybe like 2000 a month volunteers are now earning an additional 30,000 hryvnia a month in wartime pay and up to 100,000 hryvnia a month if they participate in combat proportion so again it seems like definitely a lot better especially with the combat pay <laughs> a lot better with the combat pay but yeah i mean with us you know it's non-taxable and at the same time you also get like hazardous duty pay usually um, so, but yeah, that's, that's a pretty good bump, but it is combat. And especially with the war we have now, it's pretty gnarly stuff. ...to the amount of time they spent on the front line. In other words, the Ukrainian private engaged in continuous combat operations earns about as much monthly as an American sergeant. The basic combat yeah, unit of the Ukrainian right. mechanized infantry is the nine man squad. Each squad is mounted in either a BTR armored personnel carrier Damn. or BMP infantry fighting vehicle. Mostly Soviet okay. vintage BMP-1 and BMP-2 IFVs or BTR-70 and BTR-80 APCs with a smaller mm. number of indigenously upgraded versions like the BTR-4. The 92nd nice. Mechanized yeah. Brigade is known to have BTR-4s for example. Ukraine has okay. also received infantry carriers as foreign aid, like about half a battalion's worth of Slovenian BVP M80As operated by the okay, 24th Slovenia. Mechanized Brigade and Dutch YPR-765 APCs that outfitted the 5th Reserve Tank Brigade's Mech Battalion in May. So again, I wasn't mechanized infantry myself, but yeah, uh, I don't know, this thing doesn't look as nice to have as, you know, something with a, a big gun on it, because that definitely helps a lot when you need it in a pinch. So it is kind of interesting. So if they have all these different vehicles, like I, I understand if they're mechanized infantry, the, the tactics as far as dismounting are going to be pretty much the same. But again, the capabilities as far as where they could operate, uh, how effectively they can operate in like certain terrains and also what they can go against realistically speaking, as far as like troop size or dismounted troop size, definitely something to consider. And there it kind of more, changes of course, it. But not always with the mechanized brigades. For example, the French VABs used by the 46th Air Assault Brigade are out of scope for this video, as are the Humvees okay. the 58th and 59th Motorized Brigades have been using to recreate oh, Generation yeah. Kill. As for the squad, <laughs> wow. each has a squad leader, yeah, no kidding. senior rifleman, sniper, RPG-7 gunner okay. and assistant gunner, 
one or two machine gunners, a driver, and a gunner for the vehicle. The Ukrainian okay. Army's standard issue service weapon is the AK-74, but depending on the unit, the driver and RPG-7 gunner may be armed with the shorter AKS-74U carbine, nice. although this seems to vary. The senior rifleman is also armed with a GP-25 underbarreled grenade launcher, similar oh, yeah. to Russian practice. Most squads in a platoon are meant to have two RPK-74 light machine guns, one RPG-7 rocket launcher, and okay. one SVD marksman. How That's a lot of different weapons, to be honest. I mean, when you think of at least even like a light infantry squad, in the Marine Corps, you'd have like the M27, the M4, the M320 or the M203. Uh, I think it's just the 320 now, but you'd have the grenade launcher. The designated marksman is something that the Marine Corps was introducing. But again, like this is it's kind of cool. And it's also just different for me because it's all like pretty much like Russian hardware so an svd and then you have like an svd dude next to a, a guy with an rpg is kind of funny in and of itself but yeah okay it gives us a better appreciation for kind of what they're working with and what they're capable of because again even having something like a grenade launcher is great when you're in like urban battle and having like an rpg and then having that svd kind of supports is, is pretty clutch for one of the platoon's three squads has a pkm belt fed machine gun team in lieu of the rpks and one squad okay. per platoon will have a medic rifleman in lieu of an svd so the okay. platoon in total has four rpks one pkm two svds and three RPG-7s. Disposable okay. AT munitions like RPG-22s and donated M72 hmm. laws, AT-4s, M141s, N laws, and other systems have also been made available. Nice. In this regard, with the exception of the more They're very welcome, systems I'm that have sure. been donated like the N law, there isn't really a big difference between Ukrainian and Russian squads in terms of capability. Although the hmm. Russians generally have a larger share of PKP general purpose machine guns rather than RPKs. I do also like how he's showing the effective weapon ranges because that definitely means a lot because it shows you how close and personal they need to be getting to actually be effective with those specific weapons as for javelin missiles while the u.s army uses them as platoon or squad weapons pretty much no other military can afford that the hmm. ukrainian research center for missile troops and artillery has published a ttp document stating javelins should be centralized in a battery either Damn. part of a brigade's anti-tank battalion or directly under brigade control Damn, each battery a brigade will have three asset. platoons with three squads of three javelin teams each. It can either act as an anti-tank reserve for the brigade commander or attach its platoons to mechanized battalions. Okay. From there, a platoon hmm. either acts as the battalion's own anti-tank reserve or attaches its squads to the mechanized companies. That's more okay. or less one javelin team per infantry platoon. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. But again, they are stupid expensive when you think about it. Generally speaking, inside the infantry company, you'll have the weapons platoon, which will also be augmented. In the U.S. Army, you have the weapons squad, which is where you'll have some of like the the you know more Carl Gustav, some of the more of the launchers, more of the heavier machine guns, uh, and that makes it a little bit easier to at least have access to it. And of course, they stay pretty much organic to that unit. So they train together and that's also more beneficial. It should be noted that the crews of the more capable anti-tank systems like Javelin traditionally branch artillery. This is supported by photos of soldiers with artillery patches training on Javelin okay. immediately before the war. The huh, N-Law okay. by contrast seems to be used more by infantrymen. More recently in August, Ukraine put out a video on Facebook covering the 87th Anti-Tank Artillery Battalion of the Reserve 45th Artillery Brigade, referencing their use of the Javelin, Stulkna, huh. and the older Rapira anti-tank guns. I need to check this that out. This level of centralization makes sense from a training, accountability, and flexibility perspective. With a limited number of javelins available, it wouldn't mm. make sense to try and give every infantry platoon its own organic javelin team. It's yeah, that more makes economical sense. to attach them where they're needed. But back Especially if they're training specifically on that weapon, you want them to be good on that as opposed to some infantry dude who's having to learn it on the fly. Uh, for the most part, they're pretty simple, but even still, you want that comfort at least. Back to the platoon, in addition to three squads, there's a platoon commander and assistant platoon commander who ride with the squads. Each mechanized company has three of these platoons. Companies mounted on BTRs also have an anti-tank platoon with 17 personnel, 3 BTRs, and 3 Matisse anti-tank guided missiles. 
Okay. BMP companies don't have this platoon as BMPs themselves can mount ATGMs. Right, In the okay. company headquarters, one vehicle carries a company commander, deputy commander, In one senior vehicle? technician, company sergeant major, medical instructor who's usually an NCO, an SBR-3 radar operator, That's kinda senior sketchy. driver, an APC gunner. This makes for a total of 112 personnel in BTR companies and 95 in BMP companies. Overall, very Soviet in structure. One hmm. level above, mechanized battalions have three mechanized companies, but okay. there are some differences between BTR and BMP battalions. A BTR battalion will have supporting it a mortar battery with six 120mm mortars, an automatic nice, those are always very welcome. with six AGS-17s, an anti-tank platoon huh. with four ATGMs and two SPG-9 recoilless rifles, okay. an anti-aircraft and missile platoon with nine IGLA man pads, Damn, okay. a reconnaissance platoon with one BRM and two BMP-2s, an engineering and sapper platoon, which includes a PZM-2 earth mover, signals and a battalion? platoon, Damn, supply they company, have a lot. and battalion medical center. Note that although the Ukrainians call it a supply company, it's equivalent in capacity to a Russian battalion material support platoon. Yeah, it makes it, sense. 48 personnel man eight cargo trucks, six fuel tanker trucks, one water tanker, four mm. PAC 200 field kitchens, different types of mobile repair shops, and one Bram 2 armored recovery vehicle. The Damn, just one recovery vehicle? That's kind of sketch. Um, cause I've seen where a recovery vehicle went down and it was a nightmare and it was very muddy and a lot of the vehicles got stuck and that was pretty much it. We had a lot of ad hoc, uh, recoveries, which was pretty kind of, it was kind of cool to see that, but it was not fun cause it took a long time. Uh, and you know, you got super, super muddy doing it. In addition to other supporting vehicles, the BMP battalion, meanwhile, lacks the anti-tank platoon and generally has 40 BMPs and about 520 people at full strength. Okay, not These much different These battalions then. fight as battalion tactical groups reinforced with assets from their parent brigades. Three okay, mechanized yeah. battalions form the core of the separate mechanized brigade. Brigades that existed before 2022 have also had one motorized infantry battalion since 2016, which were converted from the first territorial defense battalions formed in 2014, so the hmm. army could more closely plan their activities. But okay. brand new brigades and reserve brigades that are now engaged in combat don't necessarily have it as standard. Although some have also integrated new separate rifle battalions that were formed in the early weeks of the war for national defense. The pre-existing 72nd Mechanized Brigade has the new 48th Separate Rifle Battalion, for example. Separate rifle. So in okay. some cases, cool. Cool Mechanized logo. Brigades are running five infantry battalions. Mechanized Damn. Brigades also have a one tank battalion. The Not closest bad. thing to standard the Ukrainians have is the T-64BV and its upgraded versions. Although some brigades operate T-72s, both mm. T-72s the Ukrainians had on hand and ones that have been donated. Notionally, okay. this would allow for each mechanized battalion to be reinforced by a tank company. But that would be nice. Since they're a brigade asset, they can be weighted to wherever they're needed most. Whether that's as a brigade reserve, having more than one tank company support by fire during a battalion <laughs> assault, or itself acting as a spearhead in an attack. Oh, no kidding. Supporting these maneuver battalions... Whoa, is a that's not something... I mean, there is a tactic to use you know, tanks as cover, um, but they're definitely going to attract a lot of attention um, and bullets and things that explode. So not ideal. I know like our, our tanks had a phone. So the, you know, if there was a grunt behind, they usually didn't work, but if there's like a grunt behind, they could communicate to that person. Uh, I, I, it was probably used a little bit more in like Iraq, maybe uh, as far as like going through the streets, but I, I don't know. I can't speak from experience. Um, but yeah, is a interesting to see this. Attack. Supporting these maneuver battalions is a brigade artillery group. Generally, this group is of regimental size, including a control and okay. recon battery, two self-propelled howitzer battalions the for providing direct hmm. support to the first echelon BTGs, and a rocket artillery battalion. Overall, this is about the same setup as a Russian brigade. As well, an anti-tank battalion armed with towed MT-12 anti-tank guns and ATGMs is also there to act as a separate anti-tank reserve. 
Let's get Brigades that Brigades also have an anti-aircraft missile battalion as standard, as well as smaller subunits. Hmm. These include engineer, maintenance, and logistics battalions, sniper, recon... Yeah, engineer battalion. <laughs> Again, another very important thing. The repair, of course, that's, that's important. Logistics, we already know that's very important when it comes to what we've been seeing in this war. But an engineer, especially like if there's landmines or there's any sort of like wire obstacle or tank ditch when you're talking about a mechanized brigade you're going to want to be able to clear that so you can at least start moving people because if they close down a route and you know the terrain's really crappy it's going to put everybody in a hard spot and slow down everything Reconnaissance, electronic warfare radar nbc defense signals and medical companies and a commandant platoon which provides security hmm. to brigade cps Okay. And at the highest level, brigades are administratively under geographically based operational commands. North, okay, pretty similar east, to us south, ish. and west. However, these operational commands have been known to task organize intermediary operational tactical groups to tighten command and control for certain areas. Hmm. For example, on April 14th, Major General Nestorenko took command of Operational Tactical Group Sumi, consisting of two of the new rifle battalions raised for the defense of Kyiv, the 116th and 117th Territorial Defense Brigades, and units of the Border Guards, Police, and National Guard. They're Damn. now responsible okay. for the defense of Sumy, Poltava, parts of Kharkiv, and the Cherkasy region. Like a Before lot. we close out, I just want to remind everyone that we have a charity shirt featuring the Ukrainian mechanized infantry linked in the description. All pro But he's saying they have AK-70. Not trying to, to crap on the merch, but he's saying they have AK-74s. But I'm pretty sure that dude's holding an AKM. Um, okay. I mean, pretty cool. He's a cyborg. Interesting. I have a lot of questions, but I'm not questioning this design because it is freaking cool. Kind of want to check that Profits out. Kind of want to cop it. Go to the medical aid stream of United 24. And if you like this info and want a similar look at Ukraine's tank units from crew to brigade, check out our earlier video on just that. We'll see you mm. over there. Hell yeah, good stuff. Okay, so again, exactly what I expected from, from Battle Order, literally just getting down to the business and giving us that information. So again, I do like the comparisons as far as comparing it to the Russian structure, because I mean, it, the structures are pretty much the same. It kind of gives us a better understanding of how it should look on a certain battlefield, especially when you know, like if certain units are operating in that area, you kind of understand like how the playing field is as far as like this size force, uh, this size elements going against each other. So gives us some good perspective for that. Again, gave us some information as far as the weapon capabilities, all the different weapon types that they actually have. And also kind of the, some of the nuances that you see, especially nowadays, I'm sure, you know, it can vary a lot just depending on all the foreign aid equipment kind of coming in and being fielded by these mechanized infantry units. But again, very interesting. Um, I, I, Still can't compare it too much to our mechanized infantry units. Um, but again, it's still kind of hard. And I don't think it's even worth really comparing them to ours uh, because it is more of mirroring the kind of Russian Soviet structure um, a little bit more. And the equipment is pretty much completely different. Um, so it's not really worth comparing, to be honest. But definitely interesting to know. And again, it's kind of it's crazy to see all the footage that we're getting with the mechanized infantry units. And again, you can imagine with the terrain you have in Ukraine and how expansive some of those areas can be and how separated they can be like geographically, it's nice to have mechanized infantry and it makes more sense for them to be focusing on having a lot of mechanized infantry. Of course, the US has a lot of light infantry, but that's because the US kind of likes to deploy, you know, these brigade elements, these brigade combat teams, and you kind of need you know, that, that light infantry focus when you're doing stuff like coin, like the counterinsurgency, uh, especially in some of the environments that we've been working in. But I think there is going to be a shift a little bit more towards like these larger scale things. So yeah, mechanized infantry is definitely going to be sticking around for the foreseeable future. Definitely going to be relevant. But let me know what you guys think. Of course, if you guys have any experience with the Ukrainian mechanized infantry or your own mechanized infantry units, let me know how they might differ, but also like some of the pros and cons of what you're seeing with having certain equipment inside their formation or also having more like specialized equipment attached as opposed to being organic to that. 
But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I love learning about these different sorts of military units. And of course, when you have cool YouTube channels like Battle Order, that can package it really nicely for us to, you know, kind of regurgitate all that information. Yeah, it's pretty clutch. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Of course, if you did, hit that thumbs up. If you guys learned anything, let me know down in the comments section. And of course, if you guys are new, definitely consider subscribing. But that is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.